underway and buckle up folks this this should be a good one because you are going to see two teams that like to get up and down the floor physical basketball and the Jaguars of South Alabama and JSU do have a common opponent as well, Gerhard. They both have played Wichita State. They both lost, but very close games. Both games at Wichita State, but both teams played very well. Of course, Jacksonville State and the buzzer beater that made national headlines. And also for South Alabama, they played them in a very tight game as well. 64 to 58 in the final. JSU turning it over on their first offensive possession. Jaguars, shot clock down to five. Manning pulls up, tough shot. Misses off the back of the iron, and Kane Henry, who hails from London, England, pulling down the rebound. Kane was about to pull the trigger on a three-pointer, but nice job by Manning of closing out and forcing another Gamecock turnover. Two really good turnovers for South Alabama as far as the way they play defense. Jacksonville State, meanwhile, this is a team in South Alabama, they play their best when they are turning you over, and so far they've got two on the day. And what did JSU assistant coach Tommy Wade tell you and I on this court a few minutes before tip-off? This team likes to turn you over and run, run, run. And I don't blame them after knocking off Southern Miss by 30 points. That was a, one of the records for South Alabama. Meanwhile, Jacksonville State also coming off a 93-point performance as well, so it's kind of strength and strength and offense into this one. Coach Wade did indeed tell us how South Alabama likes to play, and they do have the two turnovers of the Gamecocks. Franklin's got the first bucket of the game, so the seal has been broken off that part of the deal. The Jaguars take a two-zip lead here early. Tight man-to-man -man defense, as Coach Wade also told us, that South Alabama will trap every pick-and-roll situation. They're going to try to get in transition as much as they can to take advantage of their athleticism, and there is a blocked shot there. So Jacksonville State hasn't even gotten up a clean shot yet in this game. Give a lot of credit to Kayo Goncosle of the, the great defense on Jalen there. Manning works against Gibbs. Tough baseline runner is good. Really athletic looking play there from Manning Jr. And he, along with Franklin, Two of the several transfers that we talked about earlier. Manning coming from LSU. Franklin, as you said, coming from Auburn. Darian Adams comes around. And again, there's that trap on the pick and roll. Frenetic defense here by South Alabama. JSU will finally get a shot away, and it's Gibbs. And he picked up right where he left off in his last outing. He hasn't been in this building since November 13th, and you would have thought that, hey, maybe he might have cooled off. Still super hot. And an errant pass that time by Manning. Sails out of bounds into the JSU bench, so the first turnover of the game for South Alabama. You can already tell from the energy in the building and the energy on the South Alabama sideline, this is a game with high intensity, number one. I think both teams understand what's at stake here. It's kind of crazy that these teams have only played four times in their history dating back to 1968. Well, I was thinking the same thing. JSU leads the overall series 2-1, but the most recent game they played was last year. JSU winning a very close game at the Mitchell Center a year ago. In the lane, a kind of an acrobatic turnaround shot is good by Alex Anderson. So it's a 6-3 lead for the Jaguars. And we've got Anderson now with a touch foul out on the perimeter guarding Jalen Finch. We're going to get our first sub for Coach Harper. He's going to send Jawan Purdue into the game for Kane Henry. Really clean basketball game so far for how intense it is. Both teams with just one foul. Darian Adams. Gamecocks leading score at 14 a game. They trap and get the ball out of his hands. Jawan Purdue takes advantage. We really like to see that coming right off the bench, being aggressive. That time, very athletic play into the opposite hand there on the layup. Jaguars elect to get the ball out of Darian Adams' hands. Results in a layup for Jawan Purdue. Shot from the corner is short. That was Chandler on the miss. Here comes Jacksonville State with a chance to take the lead. Gibbs drives. 
Purdue in the corner, not a three-point shooter. Gibbs is, he fires and misses this one. So Gibbs quickly one for two from three here in the first part of the game. But I think Coach Harper will take two good clean threes here early. And from him, the range is wide open. He is a great, great three-point shooter. Javon Franklin, boy, he is a good-looking athlete too, Gerhard. Six, seven, got a smooth shot on him as well. And I don't want to jinx him, but he's 12 for 12 dating back to the last game. He's had been solid so far here. Purdue drives and lays it in. So four quick points for Jawan Purdue off the bench. Cuts the lead to one again. Jacksonville State has yet to get Brandon Huffman involved. They have so much offensive talent, you would think sometimes that you might not have the same energy on the defensive side, but South Alabama, as you mentioned, one of the top teams in the country, ranked 35th in the NCAA in Division I in points per game defensively. And they trap Finch here, and that is their game. And Finch has to foul Chandler. That is exactly what Coach Tommy Wade was telling us before the game, that they were going to have to be able to handle. And that time, Jalen Finch just got ambushed. It sets up so much for your offense when you have this much intensity on defense. And you have to know that Coach Riley is loving the effort so far here on the road. By the way, our officials tonight forgot to mention our crew, Coy Gammon, R.B. Clyburn, and Donta Carter officiating this track meet tonight. <laughs> No wonder they spent so much time in front of us tonight warming up, <laughs> running up and down the floor before tip-off. Jaguars turn it over here. I think they got a scouting report, too, about the way that these teams would run. They're definitely going to get their steps in before the night's over. Chandler picking up Finch full court. Despite the start, JSU just a point down, so they've got to feel good about that part of it. They've only gotten up six shots. In the, they're four of six from the floor. Franklin knocks it out of bounds. JSU that time trying to get it in to their big guy, Brandon Huffman. I think the scouting report for Huffman for the Jags is just to make sure he doesn't get any open looks and try to defend everything down there in the post. That time they did a great job. They gave Darian Adams just a little bit of daylight, and that's all that he needs is Adams. Again, the leading scorer for Jacksonville State just hit his 11th three of the season. It's a dangerous game, leaving him wide open. JSU's first lead comes at just over the 14-minute mark of the first half. Chandler, wild shot in the lane, no good. Brandon Huffman up for the rebound. Here come the Gamecocks pushing it up the floor. Gibbs with a crossover, drives, lays it up, misses the shot. Tough break for Gibbs. That was a good move. South Alabama right back down, and Franklin lays it in. Well, this pace really favors what South Alabama likes to do. That time going into the post and making a really good play in the post was number four, Cayo Gonsalves, and did just enough to alter that shot. Franklin now with six points to lead. All scores. Nice pass inside to Huffman, and Jawan Perdue with the assist, and Huffman with his first bucket of the game. Well, there you see the soft hands by Brandon Huffman, the reason why he's such a threat inside. You have to be really delicate down there because he'll get a lot of bodies and a lot of hands down there. He's able to pick up the basketball and score it. Gonsalves trying to pull the trigger. Couldn't get it off. Chandler drives and misses. Nice defense inside the paint that time by Jacksonville State. I think another big thing for Jacksonville State, and they're doing it really well right now, is holding South Alabama to one shot. Adams penetrates, draws contact from Chandler. We're going to have a couple of substitutions. Damari King, three-point shooter for JSU, comes off the bench. Zellesnack checks in for Brandon Huffman, who gets a breather. Saturday night inside the peak. Crowd still filing in. Great atmosphere here for this matchup between JSU out of the A Sun and South Alabama out of the Sun Belt. Finch takes a little shove, no whistle. Zellesnack muscles that one in over Marshall Keering. It's got to be a good feeling when you trade big man for big man and automatically you get points right off the bench. We saw that earlier with Purdue. Zellesnack also provides them as well. Manning pulls up and doesn't get the roll. JSU with their largest lead of the game. Four points. Just over 12 to play first half. They trap Finch again. This time he gets it to Adams. Adams had a man open. And Two teams really rolling right now offensively. 
So the Jaguars try to cut into the lead. Manning, nice acrobatic move inside. Well, these guys are extremely athletic. Manning with his fourth point. Back to a two-point lead. Finch drives, finds King open in the corner, and Damari King shoots an air ball, which is unusual. South Alabama right back down on the break. Missed shot. Offensive rebound, however. That is Anderson, and they're going to call a foul against Jacksonville State. There were three white jerseys down there, but Anderson comes up with the basketball. Good play there in transition off the air ball three. I'm going to call it on Jawan Purdue. It was a clean block, so the foul must be with the body. Anderson, a 40% free throw shooter, makes the first. Here comes Jay Powell into the game, who was a starter last year. Has not seen a lot of minutes so far this year as they try to work him back into the rotation. Anderson misses the second. Damari King secures the board. One point lead for the Gamecocks. And a turnover. Gamecocks sloppy with the ball, and Anderson makes him pay at the other end with a flush. That's how Jacksonville State started this game with two turnovers early. It did not bite them as bad as it is right now. And once again, this is a Basketball team, very opportunistic. Six turnovers already for JSU. Darian Adams, they're not going to let him get free out of that pick and roll. Gamecocks turn it over again. Turnover number seven. Great anticipation there by Kiri. Gonsalves, out to Anderson. Manning, long range three. That's a big triple right there as it gives South Alabama a four point lead. That's a huge sequence as well. You take it on defense, you come back, reset your offense, get a wide open shot. One of your best players and your leading scorer throughout the course of the season knocks down another one. Seven points in the first half for Manning. South Alabama on an 8 0 run to recapture the lead, erasing JSU's four point lead. Darian Adams pulls up, shoots a tough shot, no good. So these last few possessions for Jacksonville State, a couple of air ball threes and a couple of turnovers. JSU, three turnovers in the last two minutes of the game. Easy look inside is Kieran with the basket. Anderson with the assist. It's a six-point lead for South Alabama. And you can see the defense is really fed into the offense here for the Jaguars. A beautiful pass inside for the easy bucket. This is the largest lead of the game for the Jaguars. Gamecocks in need of a basket. Powell splits the double team. Wild pass out of bounds, and Coach Harper doesn't like the lineup he's got. He's going to get Gibbs and Huffman back in there. Zella Snack's going to go out, as will Jalen Finch. Yeah, the sequence there, just not the best matchup in this game. Obviously, players that we'll see over the course of the season for the Gamecocks make big-time contributions. But against that lineup, against these very, very opportunistic and very fast Jaguars defense, it wasn't the matchup he needed, so getting some subs in. Darian Adams gets his first breather. He's played the entire game so far. Kane Henry has only played three minutes. He is back in there for Adams. So some fresh bodies on the floor now for Coach Harper. Huffman, good defense. Jaguars maintain possession. Anderson drives on Kane Henry. Shot is good. He gets the bounce. I'll tell you what, the athletic ability, and I feel like every Jaguar has the ability to hang in the air for about another half second. That has been a difference in this game as JSU turns it over again. And Smith, Deontay Smith, who we haven't heard from offensively, shows up there on the defensive end. But one thing about the Jaguars team, Gerhard, the way their roster is constructed, shot clocks winding down. They've got many options to put the ball on the floor and go get a shot. That is one area JSU has struggled with here is the shot clock as they've gotten deep into the shot clock. Correct, they usually always make the right decision, but you're right, anytime they get in deep late, you have Manning, you have Franklin, we have Anderson, we've all seen be able to create their own shot. Three-point shot from the corner is no good. 
And it is out of bounds off of South Alabama. Another transfer also on the floor. Lance Thomas from Memphis. So it is an eight point lead, largest of the, of the game so far for the Jaguars. They're on a 12-0 run over the last three minutes. Kane Henry drives in the corner to Gibbs. He's quickly defended there. In some trouble. The ball winds up inside to Brandon Huffman. Has his shot blocked. It's Huffman. You don't see that very often. The, the big fella goes up and has his dunk attempt blocked. There are very few people in the country that can do this, but Get a load there to help defense on the backside by Franklin, and that fires up the Jackson, uh, Jaguars bench there on the other side. They get more fired up about these defensive plays, more so than the brilliant offense they've run in the last few minutes. 20 seconds on the clock, Damari King to inbound. Throws it into Huffman in the corner to Kane Henry. King drives. His runner is blocked. Top, Lance Thomas with the block shot. Here comes Anderson on the other end. A one-man fast break. Misses the shot. It's off. Probably will see the starters play a lot of minutes in this one. The rest of the way. Finch is back in there. Darian Adams is back in also. Adams over to Finch. Shot clock now under 10. Gibbs drives and has the shot blocked. And a tie up inside between Henry and Smith. And the ball will go over to the Jaguars. The intensity for the Jaguars has not stopped no matter who it is. We talked about the substitutions for Jacksonville State. Seemingly whoever Coach Riley has thrown into this contest has been a contributor. drives and left it short. I got to call a charge as Manning dipped that left shoulder into the defender. There's three total fouls here. Really for Jacksonville State, oh, four. As you mentioned this earlier, as hard as these two teams are playing, as up and down the floor as this pace is. We only have 17 fouls total. Make it eight now with that foul on Brandon Huffman. And that's exactly what it was going to take, going down in the post and getting those fouls. But it's, it's a, I think it's a benefactor of two different things. As you take a look at the foul once again on the backside, just trying to get the help and getting in there on the hands. I think number one, both teams know how to play really clean basketball. Secondly, I give these officials a lot of credit, letting these guys play it out, knowing that the styles that both teams like to play. I agree, I think the officials have done a very good job letting them play, but not letting it to get too out of hand. Huffman, a 64% free throw shooter, misses the first. So JSU still hasn't scored in the last almost six minutes, and Huffman finally breaks that streak. So it's now a seven point lead for South Alabama. JSU picking up full court. Crowd chanting defense. Didn't get any defense that time as Javon Franklin cleared path for the jam inside. Nice. Excellent, excellent execution there. A little hesitation and then throws it down. Eight point lead, or eight points for Franklin, I should say. The lead is nine. Largest of the path for South Alabama. Finch in the lane in some trouble. Dribbles out of trouble. Dribbles back inside and misses, but draws the foul on Deontay Smith. You see the drive inside by Finch, who is a 90% free throw shooter. With JSU going cold from the field, this is another great strategy to try to get it inside and get some points at the free throw line. You saw it with Huffman earlier, and now Finch on the line. Jalen Finch, the junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, makes 
the second. JSU trying to pick up the defensive intensity also. I going to say styles make fights is the kind of the, the term in boxing, and it looks like the same thing here as Jackson State picks it up. And South Alabama quickly down the floor. Manning almost lost it. And we'll turn it over here as he travels. He had Anderson on the outside, and I, I saw his eyes, and he looked like he wanted to throw it, but then at the very last second, came back down to his feet and turns it over, and he's upset with himself for that because he saw Anderson wide open. So the Gamecocks still looking for their first field goal in the last 6.47. All they have is a couple of made free throws, and we're gonna get a foul on the baseline. Well, that's a good matchup, Manning and Darian Adams. And Adams trying to break free down low, and they get Manning for the foul. That'll be his second. The well, leading scorer is a guy that cannot be getting off-ball fouls, and Coach Riley will let him take a little breather for a second. Seven points in the day for Manning. Under six minutes to play first half, so Manning on the bench with those two fouls. Another whistle call against the Jaguars. This one will be on Alex Anderson. <laughs> a foul that is almost the exact same, another off-ball foul down there by the post. And the officials explaining there to Franklin exactly what's happening. It sounds like, it looks like he's saying that they're holding down there, trying to come off the ball screen. So here's Darian Adams at the line, a 78% free throw shooter. Gamecocks are two for four at the line tonight. Adams makes the front end. Only Darian's fourth point of the game. Adams makes both. He now has five, makes it a six point game. Checking in for the first time for Jackson State will be Caleb Bird, the true freshman from Atlanta. Jalen Gibbs will take a break. JSU has some free throws, but still their last basket was over seven minutes ago. They come up with a steal. Nice hands by Finch. Bird finds Henry in the corner, back to Finch. Bird in the lane, goes up. Contact, no whistle. Brandon Huffman could not control the ball. And they're going to award it to Jacksonville State. The crowd wanted a whistle that time. They all did, and the, <laughs> the officials must have saw all ball. It's, it's a smaller guy at guard with the ball going up against the trees down low. Small guys get no respect in that lane tonight, <laughs> did they? Not exactly. <laughs> Big possession here, though. Gamecocks could cut it to four or three with a three. Finch fires as the shot clock buzzer goes off. And again, another great defensive sequence by South Alabama. They just continued. JSU finds himself so deep into that shot clock so many times tonight. And it's the 6'8", Caio Gonzalez marking the very quick Jalen Finch. And give credit to the big man, made him alter the shot. Against full court pressure, the Jaguars nearly throw it away, but Yvonne Franklin is going to be fouled on the floor. That'll be Morose Zellis next foul. The first on him, 15 foul for JSU. So South Alabama will inbound with 450 to play here in the first half. These two teams putting up a lot of points last time out, but tonight, would you say that this is a defensive struggle? I think so. And give a lot of credit to South Alabama. Their defense has been lights out, especially the, the middle part there of this half. Gonsalves with a nice dish 
to Franklin who jams it home and that is another assist for South Alabama. They've got five assists in this first half. Darian Adams drives, dishes to Kane Henry. His shot is blocked inside by Franklin. Quickly back down, Smith misses. Offensive rebound by Anderson. Franklin spins in the lane. Open shooter on the left wing is Smith. He misses. JSU finally able to get the rebound. Finch in the lane. Wild shot. And even when JSU does penetrate, they're going in there amongst some big guys and the, really affecting the shot traje trajectory for JSU. Especially Franklin. Franklin and Gonzalez are have both been fantastic at that. Doing nothing more but contesting the shot, just making JSU to take a more awkward shot than they want to. Chandler in the lane, gives it up, Gonsalves fires, misses, Darian Adams with the rebound. JSU hasn't scored from the field in the last nine minutes. Only free throws in that period of time. Adams tries to change that with a runner in the lane. Misses. Kane Henry with the offensive rebound. He goes up. Gamecocks are now five of seven from the line. Free throws have kind of kept a minute here in the late in the first half. When you can't get anything going in your set offense, it's good to just attack the basket and see if you can draw some points there from the charity strike. Jaguars break the Gamecock press and control it in the front court. Smith over to Anderson. Makes the move on Darian Adams. And they turn it over. Too much passing that time. Yeah, Franklin tried to go inside and just way too many JSU bodies there. Good steal there by Adams. Gamecocks trying to cut into the lead. Down by 6, 220 to play here in the first half. Gibbs picks up his dribble, finds help in Finch. Kane Henry drives, shot clock getting down low again, and Kane Henry with a very acrobatic move in the lane and gets it to fall. They certainly needed that. We get closer to halftime. Gamecocks finally score a shot from the floor. Despite the struggles offensively, the Gamecocks find themselves only down by four. Kane Henry able to save it into Darian Adams. Gamecocks with a chance to finish the half strong. Darian pulls up, misses the three. Tough break there for Adams. That looked good when it left his hand. Chandler right back down. Post Adams up down low. And we're going to have a foul on the floor. They're going to say Darian Adams fouled him. And Coach Harper has got his jacket off over on the JSU bench, and he has really given the official an ear for He's pointing at the other end of the floor, and I think he's comparing another play maybe. <laughs> Knowing most coaches, they're going to talk about some inconsistencies there, especially down low in the post. And, of course, all of it down there is – no two plays that are exactly the same. Baseline shot is good by the lefty J.J. Chandler. Nice stroke there from about 12 feet. Came in this today as the second leading scorer for this ball club. They're playing as well as they are, and the guy that averages 14 points per game just got his first basket. He's one for four from the field. Back to a six-point lead as we near one minute to play in the half. Inside to Huffman. He goes up, and nobody going to block that one. Well, that time, Franklin trying to front Huffman. The pass was put perfectly. Those fronts have been working for the most part of the game. It didn't work there. Then Salvis got three. Gamecocks maybe caught a break there. He missed that open three, but they got the offensive rebound. Franklin lost it on the way up. And again, full court pressure by the Jaguars. As Smith step for step with Jalen Finch. Jay Powell's in the game out of the timeout. He has the ball. Adams drives. Shot no good. And here come the Jaguars. 
again is that length inside affecting the shot from Adams. That time it was Franklin affecting that shot, and they're just, they're very long, as you mentioned earlier, but they're also really athletic. They can get up there and just make you think about the shot just a little longer. They were going to play for the final shot. Finch knocked it loose from behind, so Gibbs will get the final shot, and he goes. And we're going to have a whistle and a foul against Charles Manning. That is going to be number three on Manning Jr. This is the leading score for this basketball team and a really, really, I understand the decision to try to go for the ball there. However, that gives him now three fouls and that's your leading score now going to the bench. The transfer from LSU, seven points on the day. See if the Gamecocks can take advantage. Not only they get his points to the bench, Gerhard, they get his defense out of there. Exactly. He's been playing great defense. He was marked on Darian Adams on that first series, and I'm pretty sure that was going to continue. Jalen Gibbs pass inside to Brandon Huffman is batted away. Six seconds on the shot clock. Jalen Finch gets it into Darian Adams. Kane Henry will shoot a contested three and miss. Good defense that time as Gonsalves came out and affected the shot from Kane Henry. Gonsalves shoots and hits and continues his streak. Now 23 straight games dating back to last year with at least one three. He's been such a weapon, mainly defensively, but then here on the offensive end as well, getting his first basket of the game. Finch misses a layup. Bounces around, and here comes South Alabama quickly down the floor. What a spin move. Offensive rebound by Anderson and puts it in. They don't, you, these guys just don't let up. They don't at all. They, I mean, it's just one of those things where they have great intensity and anticipation. That time just crashing the glass very hard after the very athletic play and spin move. South Alabama on a 5-0 run to begin the second half. Their lead is up to six. Darian Adams guarded tightly here by Chandler. Five seconds on the shot clock. Darian got to make his move. Drives the lane and misses the layup. You don't see Darian Adams miss those kind of shots very often at all. Franklin in the lane. Tried to dish it to Anderson who could not control the pass. A nice pass there by Franklin. But going back to the layup you just talked about earlier, there's how much more of an easier shot there for Darian Adams. And he played everything perfectly. Came off the screen of Huffman at the top, used his speed to get to the basket. Just couldn't make it drop. Jalen Finch drives. Back out to Henry, who drives. And we're going to get a blocking foul against Gonsalves. Who looks a little dismayed at that call? Damari King's going to check into the game for Jacksonville State. Well, they could sure use some three-point shooting here in the second half from Damari King off the bench. He hasn't really been able to get up any clean shots here in the game so far. Inside it goes to Huffman. Triple team back to King. Back inside to Huffman. And he turns it over. They do such a great job down low in the post whenever Huffman gets the basketball and then they turn it right into points on the back end of that. Great job there. Huffman came in. You mentioned it. They double teamed, send the help. They got the steal in the basket. Anderson now in double figures with 11 points. The lead is up to eight. JSU still has not scored here in the second half. They had a long scoring drought in the first half. Kane Henry goes up with the offensive rebound, gets it over to Gibbs. He shoots a three and misses. Jaguars push it down. Franklin left open on the baseline. This is the 12-footer. Here comes Jacksonville State. Kane Henry left open. Misses the three. King, though, with a rebound. Gibbs open. Shoots and misses this three. Kane Henry with the offensive rebound and the putback. That's exactly what they needed. They spaced the ball really well. Got two open three-point looks. Nice rebound offensively to keep the possession alive and the Gamecocks really getting nothing easy here. The only easy things have been the two three-point shots that they missed. Chandler's three is no good. Gibbs 
Brings it up the floor now. King shoots a long three, misses it. Smith with a rebound. Franklin was out way down low there and about to take the shot. Franklin gives it up to Anderson. He spins in the lane. Smith shoots a three and it rims out. Here's Jalen Finch who played 18 of the 20 minutes in the first half. The team as good as South Alabama defensively, you have to have your good ball handlers on the floor and not only a good ball handler, a good finisher as well. Jalen Finch, nice job. Just getting the shot up with a nice touch off the glass. It's a four point lead for the Jaguars. Chandler, well they are so quick off the dribble. Chandler goes up, great defense by Kane Henry. Tough break, relentless full court defensive pressure. They came in. One of the best defensive teams in the country, top 40 in so many metrics, including number 35 overall and points given up at under 60 points per game and that intensity has not led up here tonight. Four point lead for South Alabama. Still anybody's game. Missed shot at the buzzer, but Anderson stayed with it and got the put back. Well, after Jackson State did a great job on the boards defensively holding South Alabama to one shot in the first half. South Alabama really cleaning up the offensive glass here in the second half much better. Good ball movement by the Gamecocks. They find King open and he knocks down a big, big three. Only the fourth three-pointer of the game for Jacksonville State. First of the game for number one. It's coming off a really big performance against Elon. Obviously, this challenge much different. You mentioned the JSU really probably needs some of his three-point ability. At that time, hearing just a little late on the closeout. It's a three-point lead for South Alabama. Crowd chanting defense. Good atmosphere inside the peak tonight. Anderson works against Purdue. Good defense by Jawan. Shot clock down to one, they're not gonna get it off. So Jacksonville State giving South Alabama a little taste of their own medicine, taking them deep into the shot clock. Very deep into the shot clock, making nothing easy. The defense is here, putting on a clinic and coming right back into the game, the leading scorer. And I think Coach Riley senses that his ball club right now needs a little bit of juice and they're gonna put Manny back in. Manning back in with the three fouls. 14-21 is when he comes back in the game. Gamecocks down by three with the ball. Jalen Finch out high. Gives it up to Gibbs. They free up King, can't get the shot away. Kane Henry on the baseline goes up, misses the shot, got his own rebound, and is fouled by Gonsalves. And Kane Henry earns a couple of free throws. The relentless pressure here by Jacksonville State, especially by Kane Henry, getting by Gonsalves in the beginning and then getting his own rebound and making the big man foul him again. So the junior now with three fouls along with Manning's three fouls. And Kane Henry now three for three at the line. Kane Henry has five rebounds in the game. Four of them are offensive rebounds. Nice work tonight for the senior from London, England. Misses the second, though. Makes it a two-point game, however. And here is Manning Jr. guarded by Gibbs. Takes off and lays it in. What a move. <laughs> it's exactly what Coach needed. I mean, he understood that his offense needed a little bit of help right there, and then you just go straight back to the LSU transfer, and he gets you a bucket. A very determined drive to the basket that time by Manning Jr. Gibbs runs over Manning Jr. They're going to call him for an offensive foul. I think Manning Jr. could win an Oscar for that one, but nonetheless, they do get Gibbs for the foul. It is definitely award season for the movies. All the ones that might win Oscars coming out right now in December and see they are top of your screen. And Manning sold that one just a little bit, but he's got three fouls. This is a really tough matchup as well. So the gamesmanship here 
going on between two of the best players coming off really good basketball games. You know, that's really a dangerous play by Manning. Let's assume he was exaggerating that a bit. Right. Well, he's creating the whistle by going to the floor. Exactly. And it could have been the fourth foul on him. Instead, it's not, and he drives in and dunks, but I think we're going to get a foul on the floor. And they counted the basket, actually, so a chance for a three-point play as we take another look at it here. There's the slap by King and the flush by Manning Jr. who stares down our camera. But that's an interesting sequence because if he gets called for a blocking foul, he's got four, he's on the bench, this play doesn't happen. Exactly, and they don't get the same juice that they have right now. Coach Riley just banking that his guy has enough situational awareness to be able to stay in this basketball game. He is a senior, he's played at the highest levels, and. He's coming up big for his team here in the second half. Seven point lead for South Alabama. Their largest was nine points at the 6.54 mark of the first half. JSU in real need of a basket here. Gibbs, nice pass inside to Henry. A little too much mustard on that one. Kane couldn't reel it in and quickly right back down the floor. Franklin lays it in. These, I tell you, this team is relentless in the pace. This is exactly what a JSU assistant coach Tommy Wade told us they wanted to do he's before a, the game. He's a great scouter. He had, he had the scouting report to a teeth. Darian Adams is remains on the JSU bench. I'm not sure if he's not feeling well tonight, but he is not in there right now. Pitch shot is not didn't get it off before the shot clock buzzer, so a turnover by Jacksonville State. Yeah, we've seen the core four, and then for the most part, we have seen King come off the bench for Jacksonville State. A 7-0 run over the last minute and a half by the Jaguars. Brandon Huffman blocking the shot there of Manning Jr. And that'll take us right back to a media timeout. King open, shoots the three and hits the three. Boy, JSU needed that. Two big time three-pointers from King, and when JSU is able to move the ball and get him open, he doesn't have a whole lot of size. The South Alabama team's really, really long, so making sure to give him open shots is really important. Chandler spins, shoots, gets the roll. He took advantage of the, the mismatch there with the much shorter King on him. They just spread the floor, and anybody can go one-on-one, -on -one basically, and score. They are a, team's going to be a handful. <laughs> they certainly are. They have just about everything. As a complete of a basketball team, as you'll find. And Kane Henry with determination, but couldn't finish the dunk. But he does draw the foul. Comes up a little gimpy on the baseline. Hope he's OK. <laughs> just gave Coach Harper and the staff a thumbs up there. Take a look once again at the very tough, aggressive play at the basket, going right at Franklin, who's done that a couple of times here over the course of the game. Franklin arguing his point with the officials to no avail. Kane Henry with seven points in the game. Three of them have come at the line as he is three for four from the free throw line. Here he is shooting a pair. Knocks down the first. Back in the game for South Alabama is freshman Alex Anderson as Deontay Smith will go to the bench. Anderson started this game, played heavy minutes early. He's come up really big in the scoring column with 13. Henry knocks down both. Kane has nine in the game now to lead Jacksonville State in scoring. Gamecocks with full court pressure down by eight near the midway point of the second half. Good ball movement. Gonsalves finds himself open and drains the corner three. He's very deadly as a three-point shooter. The impact he's had on this game has been mainly defensively. He's doing a good job out on the perimeter. He's knocked down two clutch three-pointers as well. Didn't even attempt a three in the first half, but he's hit two here in the second. Back to an 11-point lead. Shot clock. Down to five. Darian Adams drives, takes it in, and a little floater on the baseline is good. Going right at 
Alex Anderson that time, and we'll see if Adams can get back in the double digits or into double digits. He's been there just about every game this year. Franklin missed the dunk. Good defense by Brandon Huffman. Jamar King on the push. Gets it back. Shoots a three. Knocks it down. That's five from three-point range. Brandon Huffman, by the way, is going to the locker room to be checked out for something. He appears to be okay. Hope to see him come back out soon. So South Alabama with a six-point lead with the ball as we are just past the midway point of the second half. And South Alabama with a turnover as Manning Jr.'s pass to Anderson sails out of bounds. They've had good ball movement for the most part today, but that time the pass a little too hot on the outside. A little crisp offense that they run. And you mentioned Huffman earlier. He's back on the floor. That was a quick checkup for Brandon. So Damari King walks it up the floor. This also enables Jalen Finch to get a break. He played 18 of the 20 first half minutes, so he's getting some rest on the JSU bench. Inside to Brandon Huffman. He goes up, misses. King to pull the trigger. Gets it into Brandon Huffman. South Alabama paying a little attention now to Damari King after those three made threes here in the second half. Darian pulls up and shoots a three, misses it. Tough break for Darian Adams. That one went down and came back out. Here comes Chandler quickly down the floor, and the follow is no good. Well, these guys get up and down the floor so quick. Gibbs dribbles it back out, and we're going to have a... What do we got here? A timeout um, for South Alabama? I believe so, and they were, the official was explaining to Harper the reason why he was able to get that timeout. Normally you have to have possession of the ball to call a timeout, which they didn't at the time, so I'm not sure what the call was there, but regardless, JSU basketball. King. Back out top to Darian. Who drives, gets a little screen there from Huffman, missed the shot. Brandon with the follow, though. They're crashing the boards there. That's something that Kane Henry has done all game long. At that time, Huffman doing the exact same. Really no easy shots here for Darian Adams. They're closing out on him very well at the three-point line and contesting all the shots down low. Gutsy performance here. JSU has cut the 11-point lead down to four. But it is Javon Franklin extending it back to six with that layup. I can tell you what, I've been so impressed by Javon Franklin's game. Obviously came in today 10 for 10 in the previous game, started today's game out five for five, and then the deepest responsibility on Brandon Huffman for most of the game. Gibbs inside to Kane Henry. Darian shoots a three and makes it big triple there for Darian Adams, his second three of the game. He's now reached double figures to lead JSU in scoring with 10 points. We'll claw back into this. JSU has needed some timely three-point shots, and they've got a few from King, and that time from Adams. Manning Jr. drives, draws the con 16, make it 17 points to lead all scorers in this game tonight. Charles Manning Jr. living up to his averages. All season, came in averaging 16.6 points per game. Got into a little bit of foul trouble, but give him credit. He's played really well since he came back in. Jamar King draws the double team, finds Kane Henry open. Kane drives, draws contact, and we're going to have a foul in the lane against Alex Anderson. I tell you, Kane Henry's been aggressive tonight. He's got nine points, and he has four offensive rebounds. He has really been a key contributor in this game tonight. Typically when he has great game, he's able to, to get some three-point shots off and let the defense flow from there. He went 0 for 2 from 3 in the first half. He hasn't shot another one since then, but made a great point. Everything's been inside. Lob inside to Brandon Huffman. That was a great pass by Damari King as he gets the assist. Back to a four-point game. He had to put just enough touch over the top to get it over the outstretched arms 
of a jumping Franklin. The ball's in the perfect spot for the dunk. I think he had to be more precise on that pass than any of his three-pointers. Or two free throws. And he misses the first. Makes the second. Flagrant one was the official ruling, resulting in the two free throws there for Manning Jr. Well, last time they went to the official replay, they said the first play was a basketball play. Called this one a flagrant one, and I agree with both. I do too. I think the officials got both right. Smith, nice pump fake, step back three, no good. Rebound controlled by Zealous Knack. The Gamecocks with the ball down by five. Six minutes to play. They attack Damari King. And man, have a foul against, against Franklin. That is the third on Franklin. It'll be free throws here as we take another look at it. They do not want Damari King to get free. And as Coach Wade told us before the game, they're going to trap the pick and roll. And they have done that all night, no matter who's had the ball out high. So here's King at the free throw line, his first free throw attempt of the game. And he misses. Well, they are all big now. Crowd chanting defense. Gamecocks hoping to get a stop. Franklin travel. I think that time he was looking to lean in on Morose Zellesnack. Zellesnack wasn't there. And he turns the ball over. Hadn't seen too many of those from Franklin throughout the course of that first half. He has four overall for the game. A lot of those coming here in the second frame. Jalen Finch has only played eight minutes of the second half. He's had a long break on the bench the way King performed, so he should be very fresh with the ball now up top over to Darian. Shoots a long three, misses. Kane Henry with another offensive rebound. King is open. Sidestep three, misses. Gibbs with the offensive rebound. Throws it back out. Gamecocks almost turn it over. Kane Henry gives it up to Darian Adams. Darian drives. They find King in the corner, and he knocks down the three. Great extra pass there by Jalen Finch, finding a wide open King in the corner. They give up a little bit of size when they have both of those guys on the floor, especially with a team as athletic as South Alabama. So you have to be able to get good shots, and they did just that right there. Manning Jr. drives, goes to the left hand and misses. Contact down low, no whistle. Gamecocks push it up the floor. Gibbs back out to Kane. Henry misses the three. Tapped up, no good by Darian Adams. At the other end, it's Manning Jr. against Henry. He draws the foul. They're going to say it's on the floor. So frenetic action here. It'll be on Kane Henry. That is his third foul. Our first foul against Kane Henry. Yeah, Henry knowing that he has a foul here. And He's been playing aggressive but very tough. He had the foul to give, and so to stop the easy basket and help the defense reset. Damari King stays on the floor. What a spark he has been off the bench. Four threes here in this second half, and has really kept Jacksonville State in this game with a chance to win. 4.25 to play. South Alabama with a two-point lead. Smith in the lane. And a travel. This intensity is really picking up here. That's the second travel and about four possessions for South Alabama. So the Gamecocks with the ball down by two. King has had a nice hot stretch shooting the three-point shot. He had seven versus Valparaiso on the 22nd and four against Trex on the 24th. Darian Adams, dish inside to Purdue, misses. 
Oh, Jawan Purdue from point blank range couldn't get the layup to stay down. That would have tied the game. Manning Jr. drives, runs over Purdue. Purdue makes up for the body's game as JSU inbounds down by two. King guarded by Anderson. Finch, I should say. Gives it up to Gibbs. Pull up shot from the baseline is no good. Gamecocks have had some chances to tie the game and they've been able to, able to do it. And with some of their best players as well, of course, Gibbs, as we talked about at the top, coming off that 40 point performance against Elon. Manning Jr. with determination again. It's like when he makes up his mind to take it to the hoop, I, there's just not much you can do. There really isn't, and he has been a phenomenal player all year long here for East Jaguars. And that time he saw Gibbs there just trying to hold him up and takes it straight to the basket. You mentioned it, both Gibbs and Franklin here tonight, the offensive leaders for their teams. Manning Jr., an 81% free throw shooter. He's two for two from the line, make it three for three. And he now has 20 points to lead all scorers in the game. The lead is back to five after that three-point play. King dribbles out high. Gets it back, shoots, has the shot blocked. There's the defense by Manning, and he blocks that shot with four fouls. What a game he has had tonight. Both ends of the court. He has been phenomenal all day today, and he's already had four 20-plus point games on the year. Make this five. Gonsalves pulls up. And knocks down the shot. He has had a good second half. He's got eight points all here in the second half. The lead back to seven. The coach with a lot of faith in him. With four fouls in a tight game. Kane Henry misses inside. Good interior defense once again by the Jaguars. Gamecocks have missed their last five shots. They had three attempts at it to tie the game. They were unable to do so, and now it's back to a seven-point lead as we go under two minutes to play. We saw Coach Riley a minute ago. Just the game plan simple here. Just give JSU as few possessions as possible. Chandler lost it. Gibbs comes out of there with it. He takes it up. All right, looks like they will allow them to play now. Gamecocks were able to set up full-court pressure due to the delay. South Alabama. He got a foul in the backcourt. Charles, or that should be, should say that's more, uh, Channing, Chandler, J.J. Chandler foul. So Chandler will head to the free throw line where he is yet to attempt one tonight. On the season, he is a 72% free throw shooter. Knocks down the first. Good on both. Back to a nine point lead and Damari King checks back in. Sure could use a little more three point magic from him. <laughs> he has been phenomenal here today. Inside it goes to Kane Henry. Nice. A lot of a lot of pride in both programs and heading in the right direction with Coach Saban and Coach Oates. Ahead it comes to Chandler. And Chandler is going to be fouled and head back to the line for the third time in the last minute. Chandler has a chance to. If he hits these two free throws, he will 
be in double figures. He has eight points as he steps up to the line. Nice stroke by the Texas A&M transfer. Give him 10 points, six from the line, and it is a nine point lead again. South Alabama closing out this game, hitting their free throws as we go under a minute to play here in the game. Darian Adams drives in the lane, goes up, lays it in. He's got 14 points, which is right at his season average. Full court press, Gamecocks get it in. Chandler has it. They're going to run up behind and foul eventually, I think. Still no way. Smith throws it in the backcourt. Chandler races it down and is fouled. Coach Harper not happy about the call. And he and the entire bench wanted to travel before the turnover, or before the foul, I should say. So here's been the man of the hour, at least for the last few minutes. This Chandler, this is Chandler at the line again. He is six for six from the free throw line. All six of these free throws coming here late in the second half. Let's see what Coach Harper was upset about right there is Chandler. Yeah. Did he travel? Yeah. He, <laughs> he might have had a point there. I think he thought his team should be able to get the basketball. Instead, Chandler makes two more free throws. But Chandler, before this array of free throws, the second leading scorer at just about 14 points per game, looks like he might get there via the free throw line. Darian Adams makes a tough three with a defender right in his face. Cuts the lead to six. 37.9. Manning Jr. gives it up to Smith. Back to Manning Jr. Ahead to Smith. South Alabama playing keep away. Manning Jr. dribbles out. Finally, the touch foul by Bird with 25.1. So here is Manning Jr. leading all scores tonight with 20, 8 of 12 from the field. He's 3 for 3 at the free throw line. Make it 4 for 4. There's the tough shot there by Darian Adams. Hand right in his face. Comes up and makes it. Manning gets the bounce. 22 on the night. The lead is eight. Finch picks it up at half court. Trying to get it to Darian. Darian goes up, shoots a three, misses, rebound, fought for, still battling for it, and South Alabama's Deontay Smith comes away with it, and he is fouled. Charles Manning Jr., as we talked about before, has had multiple 20-point games. And although they were able to blow out Southern Miss the other day, by 30 points, they scored 85 points in the game, but their leading scorer only scored seven in that contest. Previous to that, he had 20 against Texas A&M Commerce, and 25 against Hawaii, and 21 against San Diego. So back to his 20 plus point ways is Charles Manning Jr. Smith makes his first free throw attempt. That is his first point of the game for the junior from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Makes both. 10 point lead, 14.1. Darian Adams, three-point shot is no good. Anderson able to track it down. Gamecocks will not foul, and South Alabama dribbles it out, and they will secure.